Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Gold Chat Live. I am so excited about my guest today, but I should probably introduce myself first. I'm Deborah <laughs> Eckerling. I'm author of your goal guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals, and founder of the Dev Method. And today I get to talk to a fellow Mango author who is an awesome person, as you will see, uh, Ambassador of Light, Alan Klein, who's like, Whenever somebody says humor, I think Alan. And guess what we're talking about today? <laughs> well, if ever anybody says, about, what are we talking about? <laughs> whenever, whenever someone says, can you give me a hand, you just do that? <laughs> Actually, I hadn't thought about that, but it's pretty good. No, they, they can't have this is my hand. They got to get their own hand. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking this hand is your hand, this hand, we don't want me to sing. So, Alan, will you please introduce yourself a little bit more? Because even though awesome is a good way to intro, I'm sure you could do a little bit more detail. It's funny you use the word awesome because, and you may not know this, my next mango book, although it's a division, which is Canary, is about being or finding awesome in our life, finding the awe in our life. And uh, so thank you for using that word. It's a little preview here. Uh, so I'm an author. I've been a professional speaker for over 20 years. Um, I have a certified speaking professional uh, designation from the National Speakers Association. I'm also um, a recipient of a Lifetime Achievement Award from the uh, Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. I got to get all these uh, titles right. <laughs> and a couple of other things um, that um, you can go to my website and find out. Absolutely. Best way. And this. 20, that was 25 more. words or less. <laughs> well, and, and one of the things, and I have, so I've got the devmethod.com as my website, but I've been leading my Write On Online group page for years. And I actually interviewed you back in 2009. So I love it when you can make new connections and renewal connections because we a lot of people have a little bit or a lot extra time right now. So reconnecting is just a wonderful use of that time. Yeah. Another wonderful use of that time, humor, seeing the light in the dark. Right? right. Oh yeah, I agree. Okay, well, why don't you? Yeah, I often I call myself a jolly tologist, which I made up because I think you can be whoever you want in this world. But lately, I've kind of expanded humor and talk a lot more about positivity, which if you can find humor in a situation, you're getting a different perspective, so you're staying more positive. So I realize I'm. It's you know, humor is a little piece of that. So now I call myself, as you had on the bottom of the, of the screen, Ambassador of Light. So that's my new made up title. <laughs> I love it because we really can, we also live in a time of reinvention. So why not reinvent yourself as many mm -hmm. times as necessary until you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. land on your thing. And so last night on the Gold Chat Twitter chat, we had a wonderful community conversation about humor. But uh, for the Gold Chat Lives, I like to deep dive with a special guest and you get to be it. So congrats. Um, why is humor light so important, especially now? Well, as I just mentioned, humor gives you a different perspective. So if you're stressed out by something, if you can find some humor in it, you see it from a different angle. And so you start to lighten up. You start to like move away um, from what was stressing you out, even momentarily. It may not last, but uh, just for a moment. So you're not so caught up in it uh, and it helps you get through it. And what I notice in the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic is people using a lot, a lot of humor if you go online, there's just, um, I don't know about you, Deb, but every day somebody sends me a little piece of COVID-related humor. 
Uh, one I got recently, let me think of it. It was, um, yeah, I need I to need stay six feet away from the refrigerator to flatten my <laughs> curve. <laughs> so. um, I, I saw yesterday our, our other Ringo Nita posted uh, COVID bingo. Mm -hmm. And as you put, um, put a square for everything you've done, which is the binge watch. Um, I, of course, now none of them are in my head, but some of them were pretty amusing. So I'll try and find it. And yeah, and it, it was then. You laughed, smiled, giggled then. Yeah. I, I did. And I, you know, one of the, one of the questions I, I asked, last night is what makes you laugh and usually i just do because i say something silly and i crack myself up which is uh, oh ridiculous. wow it's all mates here i <laughs> if, if i had to identify what kind of humor i like i like silly, silly is good. <laughs> i don't know if you can see the back of my office i mean there's a closet it says toys on it mm -hmm. <laughs> And then I do have a lot of toys around my office. Um, well, here's an example. One of my pens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just because what happens? I see this or I use this and um, I just get a little smile, e even if it's an inner smile. But it just, maybe it brings me back to my childhood. So it lightens me up a bit. Um, so what I'm saying is you don't need a lot. Find out what makes you laugh or chuckle and, and get that in your life. Um, photos. I love having photos around. Here's a, one of my dog when it, she was a puppy. So it brings me, what? I said cute. Yeah. So um, cute, really cute and makes me laugh. Um, one of the great things I had, had done in my life and still, when I look at the photo, I just get this inner glow, uh, this joy was I wanted to march in the Macy day parade. Um, because when I lived in New York city, I would, I was a designer for captain kangaroo. It's maybe where I get my childlike humor and Every Thanksgiving, I had to design the set and be in the studio at six in the morning on Thanksgiving when everyone else was sleeping or cooking a turkey. And so when I saw the parade here where I live in California, I thought, one day I want to march in that parade. And so I didn't know how to do it, but I believe we can accomplish whatever we want by our intent, which is I have a TEDx talk on that, um, a power of intention. And so I put that out to the world and somebody got me into the parade. And here I am, my brother joined me. Here I am putting on the costume at like 6.30 in the morning. And um, Deb, marching the parade was like one of the highlights of my life because there were all these people along the route wanting to shake your hand and just smiling and wishing you happy Thanksgiving. And it, it was it was difficult to do because we were lined up at seven in the morning in like below freezing temperature. But once the parade got started, I was floating on air. It was just, you know, kids like thinking, oh, I'm meeting someone in the parade. How exciting, you know, or older people just like shaking my hand. Thank you for coming over to, you know, wish me happy Thanksgiving. And so that brought a lot of joy and laughter to, to my heart. So, um, I yeah. Story. And, and, and you know me, I'm all about the goals. So a goal achieved of being in the parade. Oh, amazing. Well, well Absolutely. have you listened to my um, TED talk? You know, <laughs> It's all about setting intentions and um, putting your goals out there, letting the world know about it and achieving it. Mm -hmm. And I will, when I do the recap on my blog, I will definitely embed, I'll embed this, but I will embed your TED talk. Cause I am, I am one of the things I talk about a lot is, you know, claim it, see it, make it happen. Right. And, it sounds like it, oh, simple. It's not simple, but 
but it's simple because you you know we all know i think we have a calling yours is obviously to bring light and i love your new title for that reason to so many people you know your calling and if you don't you can take some time and figure that out and then you know live it breathe it mm -hmm. and and i don't think there's much higher calling than bringing joy to the world because i don't you know, mean to be all, <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be all, no, it's not Christmas in July. Yeah. Um, but you really, especially now you and I were like very positive people. And there are a lot of people who are struggling, having trauma, things that they really have no control over at all. So mm -hmm. what, what do you recommend for people who are still like in the dark place to just get a little bit lighter? Because that will make it grow, right? Right. Well, first of all, have things around. You saw some of the things I have. Things that lift you up rather than listening to the news and brings you down. So limit your news. Um, maybe once a day you'll get all the information, twice a day. you know, And probably not before you go to bed. Not a good idea to listen to the news. But have things around that you can look at and immediately lift you up. So one of the things I always like, and when I've done thousands of uh, speeches, I always give out red clown noses. <laughs> because if you're down and you put this on and look in the mirror, you cannot stay down. Or if you're having a little tiff argument with someone and you put this on, <laughs> probably the argument's gonna stop. Um, I remember one woman after she got this, she said, you know, I went out and I bought a dozen of them. And she said, I put them around my house. And whenever my husband and I get in, you know, a little argument, one of us puts this on and we stop arguing. It's just like impossible to argue this way. So have a prop around that could lift you up immediately. So that's one of the things. The other is... Um, as I said, I love photos. My daughter wanted a cream pie thrown in her face when she was a teenager. And I thought, when is the perfect time? So she was getting off the camp bus. She was in the camp that summer. So there were 40 of her friends around and they were in not so great clothes, you know, dirty clothing kind of didn't matter if cream pie got all over it. So here's a photo of the... Um, no way. Look at the joy on her face. Look at that happiness. And so I have this around all the time um, because it just lifts me up seeing her so happy. So I think reminders, because we're getting so many reminders these days of how the world is not right, that we need to create our own reminders, whatever it is for you, um, to have around that you can instantly get a moment of lightness, of uh, lifting up uh, when when you're being brought down. Well, I am now going to think of the red nose as like the world's quickest pause button. It's like, blah, 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 pause. Oh. oh, I love that, a pause button. <laughs> yeah. Put it on and just <laughs> pause time. <laughs> I, I think we've just solved all the world's problems with the red there nose. There we go. Well, can you imagine if the world leaders wore this at their meetings? <laughs> I mean, it, and what's so, what's so amazing to me is um, it's nothing but a little piece of foam rubber. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing big or major. It's a little thing, but it can make a big difference. Well, and that's the thing. The little things grow. It can start with something small. Now, I have to know... You have been, have you been like Mr. Gelatologist your entire life so that when your daughter was a teenager, she wanted the cream pie? I mean, where does that come from? Good question. And um, actually, I was a very, very serious child, which is kind of weird, except my wife used to have this thing. And I now looking back, I really think it's true. And she would say, what you do not get in your childhood, you get later in your adulthood. And I, I agree with her now because I was a very serious child and now I, 
I lighten up more. So um, I think I think she's probably um, correct. Okay. And that, actually, you you um, so where did this come from? So uh, my wife and I were married uh, eleven years, and a lot of our friends were getting divorced and separated. We were still married. And we'd ask each other, why are we still married? And her answer was, Alan, you make me laugh. So there was something there that I didn't even know, you know, I had. Um, unfortunately, she did pass away when she was 31. And because of her great, we used to laugh a lot together. So because of her great sense of humor, I gave up a business I had. I went back to school to learn about therapeutic humor. And that's when my first book, The Healing Power of Humor, uh, was, was written and uh, published. It's now in a 40th some odd uh, printing and a 12 plus language uh, translation. Amazing. And so, and you, because I guess she gave, so she gave you this humor basis and then you took your personal tragedy to bring light to so many people. That's well, what I saw when we laughed together, what I what I realized after she did die when we laughed together, uh -huh. how much joy that was. And also after she died, when I thought back of the wonderful times we had together, or even when she was dying, I'll tell you a story. She had a copy of Playgo magazine with the male nude centerfold, and she said, Alan, I really like this nude picture this month. Put it on the wall by the bed over there. And I said, Oh, and it's a hospital. It's a little risque for that. She said, well, maybe you're right. So why don't you get a plant and cover up that part? <laughs> and I did that, Deb, and I did that for the first, second day. And, and after the third day, the leaves start shriveling up, and we would start to laugh. And I realized how it wasn't a lot of laughter, but a little bit of laughter helped us rise above that situation that we were in, gave us a reprieve and helped us get on with what we needed to do in those very difficult times. So after she died, I went back to school to get his degree in therapeutic humor. And that's when I had this passion to tell the world about how humor could help us get through anything. And the amazing thing, when I look back, I go, wait a minute, Alan, you almost failed speech in college. <laughs> I hated to get up in front of a group. I was so nervous. And yet I had this message, I had this passion, and that helped me get over the, the fear. Wow. So. That, the mission, the drive, it, it's really, I'm just, I love, I mean, I hate that you had to go through it, but I love that you took your personal tragedy and are helping so many people because not only did you find the light, but you kind of embraced it so you can help others. And now, yeah. you know, <clears throat> do you really want to say how, the world is terrible for a lot of people right now? Mm -hmm. And it, that's kind of why I picked this topic. I'm like, okay, we need to, even if it's just for 30 minutes, kind of get the message to even more people. What can people who are really, I'm really, I, that play girl, the, Images in my head. For a long time. Um, what are some other little things people can do who are like I can't, who just can't get out of it? Um, well, I think one. I have another book called "You Can't Ruin My Day," and there's 52 techniques of how to do that. So if they want more information, go there. But um, I think the very first thing is realizing that it's our choice, that it's our attitude. And Viktor Frankl talked about the only thing man really has is our attitude. And he was in a concentration camp. And that's the only power we have. So it's not the situation that's bringing us down. It's the way we're looking at it, the way we're handling it. So if you can find the lighter, if you can call someone up and you know have a buddy that you can call that you can at least smile if not laugh together, um, if you can you know 
find a funny uh go to netflix find some funny movies that appeal to you or something lighter that appeals to you what i'm saying is make an effort an effort to to change your attitude and it's hard yeah i have a friend that's depressed a lot and it's very hard for him to change that but i do notice when he can get out of the house or when he can make a call to a friend or do something I remember he used to help kids with um, Apple computer. He was very good at Apple computers and would go to schools to help them. And he said, you know, it was the only time in, in a long time that he really felt good about getting out of bed in the morning. So again, helping people. I know two years ago, what I did was every day of the year, 365 days, I wrote an email or a letter to somebody in my life, whether it was current or whether it was many years ago and have never seen them for many years. I wrote a letter telling them what a big difference they made in my life. And I'll tell you, I never had a bad day that year because I was like not only helping other people, but the, the feedback I would get is like people would, some of them would say, Alan, how did you know that I was so down today and I really needed what you said? Or other people would say, Alan, I really need to tell you. You're telling me how um, I made a difference, but I want to tell you how you made a difference. So again, we talked about a little while ago, reach out to other people. It's, it's one of the best ways to, um, to get through this and to lighten yourself up. Well, usually towards the end, I give a bonus goal and I'm just like going to jump ahead because I think that that's the bonus goal for the week is to write three letters, make three phone calls. If you want to do it every day, we're certainly not going to stop you, but just tell somebody that they're important and how they helped your life. I think that's, I just get, now I have to do it too, because I never give goals that I'm not prepared to do myself, <laughs> but yeah. But showing people you care, picking up the phone and saying, hi, how are you? Sometimes that's all someone needs. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. someone cared enough to check on me. And it makes you feel good, but it's really going to make the person that you called feel good. Right. The other thing I do every, um, particularly now with Facebook, I can see my friend's birthdays. I pick up the phone, I sing happy birthday. You know, it's just, and I'm not a great, I can't really sing, but they love it. In fact, somebody, I didn't do it this morning because I didn't see her name on the, she probably didn't put her birthday on Facebook, but somebody said it was her birthday. And she sent me an email saying, last year you sang happy birth to me and I saved it. And what's this year? She's, in fact, she said, am I chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't sing happy birthday to me this year. And so I picked up the phone and sang happy birthday. Just do that. You know, it's just maybe you can't go to the post office and mail something today, but you could pick up the phone and, uh, and, and sing, you know, happy birthday. That's the next best thing, I think, to being with someone. Uh, that that's great and and okay we're we're gonna digress a little bit because I love this by the way my birthday's coming up I'll send you my phone number all right well are you on Facebook is it listed on Facebook yes it's listed on Facebook okay. I'll I get think, an email I should probably yeah. get your phone number but yeah do that I'll say I'll say definitely okay so what are some other things people can do to celebrate milestones because we're we're a lot of us aren't going anywhere right now. Okay, so, um, and I love celebrating milestones because you're creating memories is, is what I love. Um, mm -hmm. For example, unfortunately, I had three trips planned this year. On my birthday, my daughter and I were going to go to um, Columbia River and do a cruise there, but we couldn't do it. So what she did was she did a uh, three or four foot boat and and rang the bell and it's like a greeting card but all the all my friends she got them to send in pictures and she put them all on the boat so they could all join me <laughs> for for the birthday so it's it's something i won't throw away you know that's a lifetime thing i'm going to keep now um 
Uh, so, so you know, make make it special. For so for my birthday, we couldn't go out to a restaurant. It was in April, um, so we did a Zoom birthday. Oh, and the other thing now, every I have a friend that lives in Monterey Carmel area. So every Saturday night, we have a Zoom dinner at six o'clock, and we eat and we drink and we pour the wine, and sometimes we try to serve each other, but. <laughs> Uh, still on the table or on the computer. <laughs> Here, have a glass. Yeah, have a glass. And, uh, but it's uh, and I'll tell you, it's cheaper than taking them out to dinner. <laughs> um, so that's a way to connect with people too. Um, and and we both now look forward that every Saturday night we're going to have dinner together. And she lives alone, so it's a really great way for her to also. Um, she said she's really lonely and she's formally before the shelter in place, she's very um, social. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a one another way for her to still keep being social. Okay. And if anybody is watching and they have really good ideas for celebrating and bringing light into your life, we want to hear them in the comments, or if you've got funny, goofy pictures, feel free to post them as well, because Alan loves them. I love them. You need to, yeah. you need yeah. to have yeah. um, just the little, littlest things. So what is, what is your favorite toy? You said you've got like a whole bunch. Do you play? No, if you consider clown noses, but I also have, and I don't have any on my desk. No bubbles. I love blowing <laughs> bubbles. Any kind. Well, I do be, you can't see it. I have a big bubble blower, but just the a bear bubbles where you squeeze the tummy and the bubbles come up. Uh -huh. um, I just, I just love bubbles. And um, I, I tell people after I have died, after I pass at my funeral, I want everyone to have bubbles and to blow bubbles. Because for me, a bubble, individual bubble reminds me of other people. They're shiny, they're glistening, they're floating, they're beautiful to look at, and they're here one moment and gone the next. And so for me, a bubble is is like a person. And so um, hopefully people will remember at my funeral to bring tons of bubbles and everyone uh, blow some. Well, we've, we, we have your request. All right. <laughs> It's so we know the it will be a long time <laughs> before we have to blow bubbles at you. <laughs> um, okay, what else? What are some uh, other just let's wrap up with some more like really mm, good resources for people? Mm, mm. Well, during the COVID is well, I've been keeping a list of positive things. So Keep like my list. daughter now calls me every day at five o'clock and we chat about our garden. Um, we chat about things we've never talked about before. I have a neighbor that's bringing me cookies. We have a, a volunteers in the neighborhood. I don't even know these people. And they go shopping for us. Trader Joe's, um, Costco. Um, and the other day, someone shopped for us. She's from France. And I asked for raisins. And she brought me grapes. Because <laughs> in France, raisin is great. <laughs> and so I'm even getting chuckles out of it. And also when they bring the wrong thing, I'm getting to try new things. So even there, there's positive. In, the thing is you need to look for it sometimes. So there is positive even in these difficult times. And, and just uh, look for it. It is all around us. Okay, so the secret to introducing humor in your life is to open your eyes. Look around, look for opportunities, and if all else fails, you take your light and you bring it to others and it will shine both of your days. Right, and even here, <laughs> look around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness! Well, and see, is, being silly is is a great little tool to lighten up. Well, I I said before that I crack myself up. The reason I crack myself up is every time I try and be funny, I fail. I am only funny when I am not trying to be funny. 
Well, you'll like Johnny Carson when a joke failed. He was even funnier. Oh, I don't think I've ever been compared to Johnny Carson before. And <laughs> I probably never will be again. But <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Johnny. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, for joining us today, Alan. Do you have any, I know you've already given us like the best bits on finding lightness and humor. What final thought <clears throat> do you want to leave everybody with? Well, have a feather around, get some feather, pull it out of your pillow, whatever, um, and just keep it around to remind you to keep it light. Visual cues. I Visual like that. Cues. Okay, so now, now, now we have to give people two bonus goals. So the first one is to either call, email, write something, three people, and tell them what they've done for you, how much you've appreciated them. And then the second thing is either, you know, order a, a nose or just find that prop, find that visual cue that every time you look at it is going to make you smile. And one smile will multiply. Sound good? Do I, you, do I, I feel like give I have, you a hand. Give you a hand for that. Wait, should we a high five? <laughs> you shouldn't see my hand though. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you again alan so much You're for welcome. joining um everyone you've been watching gold chat live uh join me for gold chat on twitter every sunday at 7 p.m pacific and i will be back here next monday and every monday at 4 pacific on the mango publishing facebook page to bring you another awesome guest to dive deep into a topic that will enrich you, enrich your life. Oh, lighten up book, Alan Klein. You can find Alan at alanklein.com. Here, let, let, let's put that with your book. And if you're having a bad day, just Google Alan and watch his TED Talk or read some of his insights. But whatever you do, find a way to lighten up. You will lighten up yourself and those around you and you'll have a better day. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for watching. <laughs>